My name is Dr. Sue Jennings. I'm a drama therapist, play therapist and anthropologist. I want to talk about how neurodramatic play developed out of my own work. And it was quite a curious journey which involved some long journeys. It all started with a spider. I was in Malaysia as part of some research into a very interesting dance that was done by the Javanese migrants in the south. And I took a, a few days out to go into the jungle. I went upriver, amazingly beautiful and quiet, with at times the trees meeting overhead, forming like a green tunnel. And one of the tribal groups invited me to stay and we had a lovely meal together and we danced and I slept in the boathouse where they tied up their rafts. They gave me a parachute to wrap myself up in because I didn't have any bedding with me. I woke up in the early hours of the morning. I was on my side and on the back of my hand was the most enormous spider. And it was quite still and it was looking into my eyes with its great beady, bit scary eyes. And it was as if that was a challenge. Either at the end of this research I would go back to UK or I would come back again and do some more research, maybe with the tribal people. So it was like a make or break situation and I always look back on that spider giving me the lead. Jungles are not scary. They're amazing, luscious, green, inviting places. So I went back to the UK, finished my diploma and immediately registered for my doctorate. And that's when I came back with my three children to live in the forest with a tribal group known as the Temiar. Now the Temiar are a very interesting people. They're very peaceful, they're non-competitive, and they're completely child-centred in their child-rearing. If I didn't know anything about attachment before I went to the Temiar, I certainly did after living with them for a year and a half. Both mother and father were completely child-focused, even to the extent that parents are known by the name of their children, rather than the other way round, as in the West, when children are known by the names of their parents. Furthermore, mum and dad used to observe all the rules of the best food during the pregnancy, the best food after the baby is born, and took equal care time with the newborn baby. And this very much impressed me that how they had established over generations a care system that put the baby first. Interestingly enough, older siblings would also care for the small babies. Children as young as four or five would carry babies around in sarongs on their backs or give them a wash if they were too hot or rock them if they were crying. Because the Temiar believes that children should never be left to cry. There was always a reason for tears and that reason had to be found. It could be that the child was lonely. Babies are very social creatures. And whereas in the olden days, I think babies were very often wrapped up and put in a dark room and quiet, and people thought they needed to be alone to grow. In fact, it's just not the case at all. Babies are social beings from the moment they are born. And it was this idea of babies interacting from the day they are born that led me into considering and developing neurodramatic play. Neuro because it's to do with the brain, dramatic because it's interactive, and play because it's playful. So neurodramatic play consists of sensory play, messy play, rhythmic play, and dramatic play. And all of those happen within the first six months of life. Babies and mothers are interacting with each other. They're echoing sounds. And interestingly, 
When babies are put on the left shoulder, where they can sense their own mother's heartbeat, they will often change their heartbeat to the heartbeat of the mother. So that's the introduction to neurodramatic play, and we'll develop it further in future talks. <laughs>